So Julie Roginski, welcome back to NJTV. Thanks so much for having while. me. So you are, uh, and Gretchen Carlson and a few others, yep. have started this group called Lift Our Voices. Tell me in, in 20 seconds what the, the organization's goal is. Well, the organization's goal is basically a continuation of the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement really exposed a lot of predatory behavior that women, and not just women, but workers have been subjected to over the course of millennia. Uh, but what we have found as we continue to talk about the Me Too movement is a lot of people can't participate in telling their story. And the reason they can't is because they are bound either by a mandatory non-disclosure agreement or an arbitration clause in their contract that requires that they secretly and privately negotiate settlements and, and, and the world would never know about it. So sometimes people leave a job and you think, whatever happened to that person? Why don't I ever see her on TV? Why yeah. don't I ever see her in the office or him? And you come to find out it's because they're gone and they can't discuss why. They can't talk about it. And what we found is that this doesn't apply just to proprietary information. This applies specifically to toxic workplace environments. And it's time that women are, and not just women, men and women, are able to tell their stories and are able to speak for themselves about what they saw, what transpired. Because if they're able to do that, it will probably minimize the predators and people who are abusers in that environment from engaging that behavior if they actually understand that this can all become public. They can't just settle it quickly with a quick settlement. Some restraints. Correct. Yeah. So uh, NDAs are not new. I mean, they just seem to have become part of our everyday conversations now. Yeah. Whenever we talk about media or Hollywood or anything like that, I think Harvey Weinstein is probably the biggest. Great example. Uh, yeah. Great example. Uh, they're not new. What they are is incredibly prevalent. A third of American workers are now subject to some sort of NDA provision in their contracts or in their employment, which is crazy. Because when I would think about NDAs, I would think, OK, if I knew the secret formula to Coca-Cola, of course, I should sign a contract that precludes me from walking into Pepsi right. headquarters and giving the secret formula of Coca-Cola to Pepsi. What we have come to find out, anecdotally, but also through research, is that they're not used for that purpose entirely. They're, in fact, used to protect abusers, to protect predators from being held accountable. And what that does is once you get rid of the first worker that you abuse by making them sign an NDA, the next one that comes down the pike has no idea what they're about to walk into and so on and so forth. That's how Harvey Weinstein was able to operate for decades because women could not discuss with each other what happened to them. And as a result, more and more women would be subjected to Harvey Weinstein until finally it became so untenable that we found out about it. Now, I want to read this quote from you. I think it was yep. to The Hollywood Reporter. It says, if there are companies that we feel are abusing their NDA process to malign women or protect a toxic work environment, we will build our digital army and we will send out a call to action to boycott their project. Is that the, the kind of way you guys are, are planning to do these things? Well, we hope that's not going to be necessary. We hope that companies understand that there's no reason to protect people who engage in toxic workplace behavior. So if a company or, or this chief executive of a company, were to, or not just a company, but any entity, any organization, is to find out that somebody below him or her is acting in a way that is toxic and creating a completely toxic work environment for the workers in that organization, that that person will take action and get rid of the problem and not force these people to have to sign NDAs to get rid of them quietly and then the person that, that is being protected and continuing to engage in that kind of behavior. We this hope is... to educate people first and organizations first so they understand the problem so that we don't have to boycott them, we don't have to have a call to action, but if they don't engage in it and if they don't want to cooperate, then people need to understand that they are rather more interested in protecting a toxic workplace environment and protecting predators than they are in actually empowering their workers. And, and that's wrong. I only have about 30 seconds, unfortunately. Sure. But um, this is something that has come up uh, as pertaining to the um, recent campaign of, the, of Governor Murphy's, yeah? That's what I read. Yeah, because you are uh, restrained from talking about your time there, yes? Well, I'm, uh, the only reason we're even able to have this discussion is because Paul Josephson and Dwayne Morris, who is Governor Murphy's attorney, told the Star Ledger that I was bound by an NDA. Had he not done that, I wouldn't have been able to even tell you that I am. So I'll let Mr. Josephson figure out what I can and can't say. I, I hope that at one point they will, be, uh, they, will, they will let me speak to you honestly, and I'll be able to say what I have to say. All right, Julie Roginski, great to see you again. Thank you.